Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today. I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Uh, Wednesday is my bad joke day. Hmm? So these two friends, Sam and Abe, they're um, lifelong buddies, and they say, listen, whoever goes first, come back from the other world and let us know that you're okay. So they make their pact, and that's how it is. And then, strangely enough, Sam dies, and Abe is bereft, and he goes into the morning, and after a long while or a short while, whatever time it takes in these stories, one day <clears throat> Abe hears a voice. Abe, Abe, Sam, Sam, is that you? He says, yes, unbelievable. I can't believe that you came back from the other world. This is great. How is it? He says, oh, you're not going to believe this. It's freaking heaven. Really unbelievable. What happens? You get up in the morning. You eat as much as you want. You make love all day long. You go back, you take a nap, and then you repeat it. You keep eating, making love, taking a nap all day long. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. So you really in, in heaven? He says, no, I'm a bull in Colorado. So uh, watch what you, uh, you want. You may get it. And then... Uh, the lesson about karma and reincarnation. Hmm? Anyway, my journaling question for you today, how are you an overt or covert rebel? Uh, everybody put on the antithetical mask at some time, not just in terrible twos, as they say, but your inner teen, unless it was squashed completely. There's a part of you that just can't wait for the to turn their backs. So you can thumb your nose at them. And, oh, you know. But uh, different ways we don't want to conform, different ways that we want to break with the commitment, loyalty, and allegiance to the hierarchy, the individual against the monolithic system. Think about that. Let me know what's going on. Anyway, uh, I remember once the Zen master said when his students transferred all these Japanese accoutrements to create a temple for him when he came to the United States, and he was so moved to tears by their devotion. And the first thing he said is, if you want to be illuminated, if you want to be enlightened, you got to be American. So all the outer forms, from as far as I'm concerned, are not to be deified, but they, they represent aspects of your own psyche that are resonant for you. And if you contemplate them, they activate these energies inside yourself. Now, the appeal to the constants is very deep. It's great. And as Plato said, maybe the best thing you can do for somebody else is to remind them of those constant forms, which through distraction of the senses at birth, we lose touch with. And then you're going to marry, not just a person, but marry life. And just like regular relationship, right? and relationship is the yoga of the West, <clears throat> your love affair with life, it's not just a cakewalk in the open field. It's an ordeal. you got to yield time and time again, just like you do in a relationship, but not to the other person, but to the relationship. So in the same thing, can you yield to life? It's fostering. It's enriching. It's nourishing. And it'll never bring impover impoverishment to yourself if you marry life. So <clears throat> what I've learned from yoga, my teacher calls it the urge to merge, is that everybody has an insatiable hunger for the infinite. And according to their doctrines, that meditation will take you through success successive stages of absorption until you empty or silence the thinking mind, the verbal mind, the analytical mind. I can't give you the experience of samadhi. I can only lead you to that moment where thought stops. Like when they say you, an empty pitcher, when you put it in the water, it's gurgling, glug, 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 until it's full. And the moment it's full, glug, glug. The butter sizzling in the pan makes that sound while all the fat is being Heat it out. The bee buzzing around the flower is making noise till it begins to sip the nectar. That moment of silence right there. If you could sustain that, you'd, you'd get it. Anyway, the main thing to remember is that the spiritual path, certainly it's about celebration. But it's also about working on stuff that would otherwise prevent you from being high. You know, we used to say in the old days, you know, I don't want to be around someone who brings me down. Right? High is up, down is low. We don't want to be around people who bring us down. 
And so, of course, we try to control the environment, not hang out with the, uh, you know, rowdy people or bad people and so forth like that. Because if it brings you down, I don't want it. I want to stay high all the time. But you know what? We realize that just as you have to give tripping instructions to people who are under the influence of psychedelics or whatever, right? But once you realize the same things that bring you down when you're high, bring you down when you're straight, then you realize it's not that I have to give tripping instructions, I have to give living instructions. And once you understand that, then all of the spiritual teachings, even organized religious teachings, open up into a different psychological space because now you're not trying to escape or avoid. Now you're trying to work on the things that keep you down. So I used to say to my college students, why do you want to get high? Don't you know that every time you get high, you, you come down? And eventually they say, yeah, well, the truth is, but being high is great. Yeah, but now if you want to learn how to be high, you have to not get high. You have to look at the things that prevent you from being high, what sabotages you, and then that leads you to the shadow part of the path. So all I can say is everybody has a marvelous guidance system within themselves that we need to learn to work with it more. And the first thing to do is to praise your body. And as a person that's been under the gun the last 10 years, I can tell you my body still works amazingly well, miraculously well, even though I might be afflicted with a number of simultaneous comorbidities. It still shows me evidence of its amazing adaptational skill. So I praise it at every opportunity, and I hope that you praise your own anatomy as well. So cut out all the red tape. Go right to the direct way of learning how to program yourself. But don't try too hard, because otherwise you bump into what they call the law of reversed effort. The harder you try with the conscious will to do something, the less you succeed. Just give the idea with positivity and faith over to your subconscious mind, and let it show you how it can be controlled by your most dominant idea and bring it about much to your advantage. A week from today will be our next Good Vibrations class, Yoga, the Magnificent Obsession. Go to GabrielHalpin.com and sign up. Look forward to seeing you there. And look forward to hearing from anybody who wants to say, hello, how you doing?